office in Mount Vernon. Good morning, Mount Vernon, Lisbon. Hey, I'm Lisa White here in the Scott Alumni Center, and I just want to say good morning, Mount Vernon and Lisbon. Hi, I'm Jerry Deach from the Sauerkraut Days Committee. Good morning, Mount Vernon and Lisbon. And I'm still Kim. And we are promoting the awesomeness of the Mount Vernon and Lisbon area. Good morning Good to morning. you. It's rainy today. It was rainy yesterday. Yes. It's rainy. Yes. Um, but anyway, we're happy to be here. We're inside the Uptown Theater in uh, the First Street Community Center. We to protect us from the rain. We've been outside that. for a number of weeks now. But anyway, so here we are. And yeah. I'm waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> Jazzy. Ta! Mount Lisbon, this is your breaking news! It is volume 151, number 37, September 10th, 2020. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it looks like the Alley, Alley Project is beginning. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, but they were supposed to begin um, on Tuesday, yeah. but I don't think they've started yet. Yeah. We're up there. Nathan, did you see them on your way over? They're not up there at this point. The road close signs are up for that alley, but no construction equipment yet. Okay. So uh, that's weather delayed, I'm guessing. It's a project we've all been anticipating for a while, and it's really exciting to maybe start getting work on it. Yeah. So work on the South Alley project along First Street West in Mount Vernon began Tuesday, September 8th, and is expected to be completed in November, weather permitting. Weather permitting is the appropriate word. So it didn't start on Tuesday. <laughs> I guess in, unless you count putting the closed street clothes signs right. up yeah. as part of it. So, sure. you know, that's a start. Yeah. So we call that the Scarlet Boutique Alley, right? The alley between Mount Vernon Confections and Scarlet Boutique yep. is being turned into a pedestrian walkway. This is going to happen. Construction will affect the alley, parking lots on the south side of the First Street buildings, and visibility only on, on uh, First Avenue, Highway 1. So, um, uh, lower level parking is uh, going to be uh, an issue, first. and uh, so anyway, it's something we all have to look forward to. And they're expecting this to be done by November, or maybe we'll call it Magical Night. That would be good. Yeah, so anyway, that's something to think about. That's exciting. Yeah. Change. There's a really nice photo here. And thank you, Nathan. Was that you? No, no it was Margaret. So, um, Easter Iowa Brass Band honors the Steins. There's a nice photo of them here. The Steins sitting on their front porch, the band in the street in front of them, and everyone it looks like. Look at that. Yeah, it looks like families are together, but mostly yep. everyone is six feet apart. And with masks on. And we have our masks. We are just far enough apart from each other. That's right. I wear my mask every day. Every day. Yeah. I can see it poking out behind your phone there. That's right here. Yep, you got it. That's what this is. I have mine. This is not a burp cloth. No. For Jeff. No. Okay. All right. The Eastern Iowa Brass Band honored Don and Judy Stein. God bless them. Well honored, deserved of honoring. Yeah, the yes. best way possible with music, of course. Yes. The English style brass band performed an outdoor concert, especially for its founders, who were sitting on their front porch in Northwest Mumford on Thursday, September 3. Nice. So the Steins were joined by dozens of audience members who attended the concert with proper social distancing, yes. enjoying the music while sitting on lawn chairs, their own porches, or as they strolled by, they heard the world premiere. There's a world premiere. Yeah. Uh, it's called March Operator Stein. And uh, it was composed by Marcus Venables, commissioned by the Eastern Iowa Brass Band and dedicated to the oh. Steins. They have their own. I piece. just got chills. That yeah. is so cool. Oprichter Stein is Dutch for Founder Stein. Isn't that nice? Yeah. That's really cool. Congratulations yeah. to them. Yeah, congratulations. That's really good. They have put and years and years and years of effort and work and music into this community. It's yeah. awesome. Well loved in this community. You see them sitting very proudly on their porch listening to it. Also good for them. Uh, Palisades Kepler State Park in rural Mount Vernon will most likely be closed to the public until the spring. So don't go there. It's don't. closed. Yeah. Safety first. Yeah. Damaged trees and broken branches are to be cleared. They, they pose a hazard. So yes. if you're in there, a tree could fall on you and knock yeah. you in the head. Yeah. Yeah. And we wouldn't find you until the spring, Nathan. So don't go over there, Nathan. Consider yourself warned, Nathan. Yeah. We miss you if you do that. Yes. So we're keeping the park closed out of an abundance of caution for the public. This is Jim good. Hansen, park ranger. We have a lot of trees that were impacted by the derecho that we are evaluating how to safely remove. They either have had 
branches broken off or are leaning on other trees. No. So there you go. Several of the trails have trees that intermittently cover them. So it's dangerous to even to walk. Even right. if it's not going to fall on you. Yeah. You're going to have to climb yeah. over trees Trail. to get where you're going. Trails aren't clear. They yeah. Are clear. yeah. So it's just uh, abundance of caution. Yes. Let's stay away from the park. There are other parks. Or you know what? You can walk on streets. You can't. Oh, the path through nature park right now, the new sidewalk. Yeah. Lovely. Oh, well, there's a good idea. Oh. It's and you can walk on sidewalks. Yes. Yes. You walk up to Cornell and walk back. That's always a nice yes. walk. Yes. If you're okay with walking uphill, because it's a hard hill. That fifth that new one. Woo! Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'll make your heart pump. Yep. Well, good. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Yes. Keeping our heart going. The, the alternative is not so good. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, um, we went up to uh, Makokoda. The caves are closed, but we still walked around. Oh. Yeah, that was kind of nice. Yeah. It was, a little busy when you know you kind of had you had to have your mask hanging down and you had to mask. Yeah. We we would we just had a code our family whenever I was leaving typically and um, okay mask gang and we we'd, <laughs> we'd all put up and then mask down and then we said mask gang. <laughs> yeah. So we did good. Well, you got them trained well, Kim. Do you know? <laughs> when I've threatened death before, but you've been not nearly as effective as COVID. Yeah, there you Ugh. go. All right, all right so. The Highway 30 corridor plan advances on a split vote. Oh, split vote. This is controversial. That's close. Yeah. So expanding retail outside of Uptown divided the Mount Vernon Planning and Zoning Commission Ooh. as it considered a Highway 30 master plan. So they have to, they have to wrestle? I have to decide. Was there wrestling involved? There was not. It was a very civil discussion, yeah. even with the disagreements. Okay. So in the end, the Wait plan the created by Confluence, and this is something we've been talking about for years now. Yeah. Um, for use and design standards around the Highway 30 corridor was passed to the city council on a split vote. That's what makes it controversial. Mm -hmm. It wasn't unanimous. So the yes. committee itself, the planning zoning committee, was a little torn. Yes. So um, anyway, the US Highway 30 master plan is moving on to Mount Vernon City Council with no recommendations of changes following a four to three vote from members. Mm -hmm. So uh, the members are in here listed and some of their uh, concerns are in the story. Very well written, by the way. I really enjoyed reading that. Thank you. Good job, so, um, David. Anyway, uh, you know, we'll see what happens at our next city council meeting, right? Mm -hmm. That's the next step for this. Yes. Yeah. And it's in front of them three times or something? Is that how that works? I, I don't know if it's in front of them three times because it's not an ordinance. Okay. Mm -hmm. It might anyway, just be the once, but... The next city council meeting, which was... Uh, the 21st. 21st, thank you. That's when the city council will be discussing it. So we've got a Monticello man running for Iowa Senate seat. Okay. All right. So Eric Green, he's a small business owner in Monticello, announced his candidacy for Senate District 48 as the Democratic nominee. Okay. Senate District 48 is currently represented by Dan Zumbach, uh, Republican. The district covers most of Delaware County as well as areas of Jones, Lynn and Buchanan County District. Includes the cities of Anamosa, Springville, Lisbon, Mount Vernon, Central City, and areas of Marion. So there you go. We grew up in Monticello, graduated Monticello High School, and uh, while at Iowa State University, that's my alma mater, he participated in the Society of Automotive Engineers. Oh. Yeah, I was not on that. <laughs> he was not. I was not in that society. Mm -mm. Um, anyway, well, there you go. Good for him. Public Safety Department cautions about new grandparent scam. Oh, oh I hate this. This is not a good news story, but it's a good news story that you're educating people and well, letting them know. My mother gets this call all the time. Yep. Grandma, grandma, you don't pull any of the grandma scams on the Linda Benish. <laughs> She's heard them. She, when my children actually call, they have to go through an interrogation. <laughs> so, well, don't, do don't even bother calling her grandparent scammers. So yeah, they pretend to be your granddaughter and uh, he or she, if, right, son or daughter, and he or she is in a foreign country or they're in need of money. And uh, so, yes. so here's what they here's some tips. Do Verify it. the person's identity. Ask questions that a stranger couldn't possibly answer. Yep. Don't just take it for granted that that's your granddaughter, grandson on the phone. And that's the instinct because you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I need to help you. Well, apparently it's here, so it's something we have to be concerned yes. about. Um, several resist the urge to act quickly or secretly. Uh, contact a trusted family member. You know, call a genuine phone number for your grandchild or another family 
family member who would know the truth, right? Yes. Don't just give them money. No. Nope. And report the scam to local law enforcement authorities. That's most important. That's so they don't yes. get anybody else. Yes. <sighs> Gosh. So there you go. Um, the new teachers have been announced. Look They're at all those Vernon lovely business. faces. Thank you. For and they're all work. smiling big. I think they're happy to get their new jobs. They're lovely. And good. I just feel like they're all going to do great things. You yes. can just tell by looking at their faces. Thank you so much for all your hard work. In this and of course, it'll be a weird time. year. Mm -hmm. It'll be a weird year for them. Yes. It's a weird year for all of us. But particularly if you're starting a new teaching job, I couldn't imagine. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh. So this is an interesting story too. Is this you? Yeah, it's Nathan. You find all the good stories. Don't you? Very well researched. I appreciate that. So as Iowa enters six enters month six COVID nineteen pandemic, area senior living centers and assisted living centers are still seeing impacts of COVID nineteen. Oh. Um, so uh, he interviewed uh, our uh, Nathan interviewed a number of people that are are working on the front lines with this, and it's very well done. So if you're at all interested, check this story out. Yes. See how they're taking care of our lovely old people. Mm -hmm. And then I do know that Assistant Living Week is coming up, so um, there'll be some events happening. So Wednesday, September 16, there's a patio bar and family friend parade from 5 to 5.30 p.m. Isn't that cute? Yeah, and then on Thursday, September 17, a chance for tenants at Cherry Ridge to judge a coloring contest. And this is, these went out to kids, I imagine. Yeah. And oh, they colored that. pages or something, and they're going to judge them. Yes, but, I was an insert in our paper this week. Okay. Oh, well, we'll so. look for that, too. Anyway, so there you go. Look into that, you guys. Yes. Absolutely. Support our nice, nice seniors. Uh, if you like doing crafts, or maybe you want to do some crafts for some seniors you're going to visit, you know where you go. <laughs> do pick it up at Cole Library. So the, uh, Kathy uh, Box has a nice little story here about some craft books that are in there. And you can go and pick up some instructions and make little crafts. Yes. And hand them out to people. Yep. I think that's a great idea. And we're all looking for things to do all the time. You know? Always. Yeah, how many times can we watch Glee? I love that show. I was going to say, you a lot of times. <laughs> All the time. There's some people who never watch it. I never get sick of it. Uh -huh. yeah, no. Well, it's right up your alley. But you do get sick of it. You go, I don't want to watch any more TV right now. Oh, or crafts. make your crafts while you're watching Glee. She's brilliant. <laughs> Everyone's Where did we hire her? <laughs> I don't know. Put it together. All right. Put it together. Yeah. So Mount Vernon was named the best place to live in Iowa by Newsweek.com. Oh, I read it. Yeah. And you know what happened the other day? Or yes. yesterday? Just yesterday. I was clearing out. I have a, a, a habit of collecting too much of my kids' things and was going through a tub of paper uh, from, you know, because from Liddy was in kindergarten and Martin was in fourth grade in 2009. I ran across the magazine that had us as the coolest small town. Man, we are something else, even during COVID. We are we? cool and we are a nice place to live. But we already knew that. Catch up, rest of the world. <laughs> All right, Cornell College engineering major becomes ABET accredited. Wow. I think that's a big deal in I the engineering it world, too. but it's probably something we've all overlooked in this community. Cornell College has become recognized for its high quality engineering program. Rather new, really. It is, yes. Yeah. Um, let's see, as it secures its ABET, which I don't know what that stands for, accreditation for the Bachelor of Science in Engineering. The process ensures that Cornell's BSE program meets standards that are essential for prepping, preparing graduates to enter the global workforce. Awesome. So there you go, kids. If you're More in that graduate pro program, now you've got that ABET yes. behind you. Yes. So there More you go. More accreditation. Yeah, good for Sets you apart on that resume. 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 <laughs> Lisbon is exploring new communication methods. What? We can all learn how to better communicate. I you think? think? Yeah. So the Derecho has the city of Lisbon looking into a new way to communicate with residents. And I think this was an issue in both communities. Right. This we communication did. right after it. Yeah. So among the possibilities is using a Nixie alert system. Nixle. Nixie is an app that allows citizens of a community to sign up for text notifications. Oh. So the city of Mount Vernon is one of many communities in the state that uses Nixie. 
or Nixle. Nixle. Whatever that is. I don't know if, if Cornelius it's, is Nixle, but they have a RAM alert. So yeah. they, they send out alerts. It's basically that um, on their website, that email or sign up your phone number yes. or email on the Mount Vernon website. Yeah. Send you those push notifications for things yes. like, hey. Now, did you get regular notifications from the city of Mount Vernon during Drencho? On Wednesday, when they finally got yeah. roads cleared, those type of things. Of, yeah. Okay, Gary's is closed for the foreseeable future. Here's where to go get gas. Here's where to go get food. Yeah. Nice. Good. So I thought I had signed up for that, but I didn't get anything after Drencho. So I've got to re-sign up. So no, me too. Because I, that would have been really helpful, wouldn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think we we're all just scrambling so much. It's like, oh my God, i got to drive over to make sure this person yeah. that I love is okay. Or, you know? or just even I had an appointment to do something at 9.30 with this person and they can't tell me that, that it's not happening, so they have to come over and, like I was supposed to help Barb Shepley with costumes. Yeah. So she shows up on Friday at 9.30 and I'm like, we're not doing costumes, are we, Barb? <laughs> As I'm standing in the pile <laughs> She of is so dedicated. I know, she is. She I probably home. had to single-handedly clear out like five trees and get out of her driveway to come visit you. To come visit me to tell me that they, we weren't doing costumes, but yes, yeah. it was very, it was very primitive way. Of, you know, you did, you just had to go check on people. Yeah. Or we had a guy pull up with his chainsaw and said, "You need some help." That's right. And he yeah. climbed out of his car and started chopping things yeah, down. I saw a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Some things we didn't want. No, just kidding. <laughs> it was, but no, it was very sweet. It was very sweet. We got through it. You yeah, know, without. Did you know, being properly able to communicate. So yes. uh, I, I, I'm all better. for Nixle or Nixie or whatever, and both cities or or it. Yeah. Let's sign up for Nixie. Let's just all do it. Let's just sign up, every one of us. It. So this happens again, we can better know what's going on. Better anyway, better but better. we got through, because we're resilient type of people here. Oh my gosh, we're resilient. Do you know what we call that? Iowa strong. Is that what we call it? That's what we call it. I think it. it's Mount Vernon strong. <laughs> well, not all Iowans are as resilient as us. But Mount Vernon is, is in Iowa. Okay. No, you're right. Iowa, all over, is just as exceptional as we are. But it's not as nice a place to live. Cheers. But you know what? We don't do a show for all of Iowa. We just do a show for Mount Vernon and Lisbon. That's right. So don't forget about Iowa. From our perspective. Mount Vernon strong. <laughs> I'm the sorry. greatest town in the world. Coolest, nicest. Yeah. What's next? Best talk show. <laughs> okay. Newsweek.com, are you listening? Newsweek. <laughs> Pay attention. All right. It's time for sports. Oh. All right. Here we go. Not Unbeaten too beaten Mustangs go for, oh, and Shirley Ryan invite. Shirley Ryan invite. Ah, oh, Shirley. Is she in this picture somewhere? No. All right. It's been smooth sailing thus far for the Mount Vernon's top-ranked volleyball team. Woo. Wow which improved to 9-0 after sweeping four matches September 5th at its own Shirley Ryan invitation. Shirley Ryan. Wow. My volleyball coach. The defending Class 3A state champions, breezed by Tipton and Iowa City West, and then down a pair of states ranked, state ranked foes in, number, in 3A's number 13, Des Moines Christian, 4A's number 8, Waverly Shell Rock, Oh my gosh! So, pretty impressive that we went undefeated and didn't drop us set. That's Maggie Willems talking. We faced some adversity a couple of times in the first set. Uh, we were able to settle in and come back. That shows a lot about our maturity and our grittiness. Our grittiness. Oh, they're gritty. Oh, gritty. Oh, they're the grittiest. Gritty, so, gritty. The Lions hold on for a win at Will. More good, good. News. Uh, the extra day was worth the wait for Coach Phil Whitman's Lisbon football team, which prevailed 26 to 20 in the back and forth battle with Wilton Saturday night on the road. Non-district contest was pushed back 24 hours due to COVID concerns. Oh, that COVID. COVID. Dang you, COVID. I think we should have our sports teams fight COVID. Beat the crap out oh, of it. That would be Send it packing. That's right. Yeah, that's what we should do. Cross country. Spend as well at Regina. Everybody's just doing so darn well. It's because they've been inside too long. They just can't wait to be out and get cold. Oh, they've got all that pent up energy. energy. Mm. Yeah. Laura Swart took sixth at the Bob Brown Cross Country Classic. Well done. Held September 3 and hosted by Regina High School in Iowa City. Swart covered the course in 21 minutes. Uh, I have to 19.97 seconds. Oh, I see. Can you imagine? 21 minutes, 19. Point whatever seconds. Okay, yes, go ahead. Can you imagine running that long, that far 
in that short of time. Only if someone was chasing us. <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably lay down a I big ball. Like, okay, just take it. Just, 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 just over. Just, I'm coming a little bit. Yeah, because that's just coming. I'm coming All right. Mustangs are named Academic All State. Oh my gosh. What? Several members of the Mount Vernon Lisbon boys soccer team were honored by the Iowa High School Soccer Coaches Association. They were named I H Academic All State. I loved that. I knew exactly what you were doing there. A I A H S S C A. Yes. That's a soccer group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like FIFA. Well, it's a high Iowa school. high school soccer coaches association. Yeah. Woo. That's a lot of uh, That's an acronym? Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah. yeah. But good job, so Ryan Butterball, St. Fetcher, Brian Faulkner. So there is Brent. more in here, and you know what? I don't want to spoil it all for you. You guys get to read your own paper. I don't need to spoil it for anybody. Well, we kind of do every year or every day. Every well, day. hopefully we're getting people excited about to read. But you get more story. details yeah. in the printed word. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's much more than the headlines we read here. Yes. Your stories, and we don't. Oh yes, it. this is not a replacement for this. This right. is a supplement. It encourages people to read it. Yes. And it's a good paper, and you do a good job, Nathan. So please be proud. Okay. Yes. All right, well, always. I think that's all we got. I think so, too. So maybe it's time to sing? Well, it's always time to sing. Uh, I love singing. <laughs> yeah. Just what makes that little old ant? I don't know. Think he can move that rubber tree plant? Tell me. Everyone knows an ant can't move a rubber tree plant, but he's got high hopes. See he's got week. high hopes. 